All right, so you guys have seen me ride this thing now, and you probably can't fully appreciate the risk that my life was at because you really don't know how badly this thing is assembled. And frankly, neither did I. But let's just start off by showing you some of the stuff here that's going on. I got the clutch off there because it was all bent, and lo and behold, the shaft to the motor has been cut short by someone, and that hole in the middle has been redrilled off center, as you can tell. Because no wonder the clutch is bent because the bolt goes in there crooked and off center. Watch this. The whole thing just moves around like a friggin' hula dancer. So that's obviously not good. A new clutch for a one inch shaft on this motor is about 120 bucks and I'm not even sure it would bolt on correctly with this bolt being off center. So that kind of sucks. I was hoping to rebuild this motor and use it but the more I look at it the more I see shit wrong with it. Up here in the block casting where the carburetor intake manifold meets the block of the engine you can see that that piece is broken and somebody used a washer to try to hold it back on there which it does hold but it's obviously pretty freaking sketchy. Look at all these zip ties. There's a whole zip tie conglomeration right there. I don't know what this hose clamp is for. The carburetor's still leaking gas. Like I cleaned it and it's just still not holding up very well so I need to rebuild it or something. So here on the other side we can only see about half of it because the seat's still on it which by the way is only bolted down with one bolt on each side. There's one on this side and it's also missing the front one on that other side over there so the whole seat just kind of sits there, barely. The exhaust is completely loose. I'll show you more of that in a second, but here's the return spring for the throttle. Down around the rear bumper. Somehow works. Um, you can see there's the throttle cable zip tied to the intake manifold and just kind of stuck in there in the throttle. So yeah, that's pretty cool. PCV is not hooked up. No air filter. I had one on there the other day, a little piece of cloth, but it fell off after probably about 10 minutes of riding. That exhaust, if you look down here, there's like a bolt bolted into the engine and then welded to this pipe, but it weld broke. So I don't know what's going on there. There's the other bolt that's broken off in there, but actually it is loose. I grabbed onto it with a pair of pliers. I don't know why that piece of bolt is still stuck in right there, but it is. You could unbolt that out of there. And it doesn't seem like the compression is the greatest on this thing. I mean, it sounds all right, but it's pretty easy to pull over for an eight horse brig, especially an old one. These ones don't have that compression release in them like the newer ones do, so it should be harder to pull than that. Okay, so looking more at the rear axle here, these wheels are pretty decent actually. I like the rear tires. I'm probably going to reuse these tires even though they're a little cracked. Um, they're pretty cool looking. I just kind of like them. I think they're original, but I could be wrong. Um, but these are just pinned in here. Well, one side is pinned with a nail bent. The other side has actually got a bolt, kind of like a shear pin on a snowblower. There's my awesome exhaust. You can see the other side of the seat bolt is missing. Here's the sprocket setup. I don't know what's going on here. There's a differential. There's a lot of spacer washers and it looks like a custom quarter inch steel plate in here. And then this sprocket which the teeth are worn down to like nubs. And another looks like a custom plate on this side all bolted in. These bearings are actually not bad. They're a little loose but they're pretty decent. Um, this whole three quarter inch axle setup is going to get replaced with a one inch full length one that's 36 inches. Because you can see the wheelbase difference between the front and the rear is just stupid looking. So I'm going to widen this rear end out so it's where the front end is. So this is all going to get replaced. Bearings, sprocket, it's going to get brakes, everything. So a closer look here at the front end. You can see this looks like it was a front end to a go-kart because you can see where tube steel used to be welded in on that side and on that side right there. And that goes on both sides. And it's a kind of a tiny piece of steel. I don't really trust it. It looks like there's a lot of leverage out there. So I'm gonna replace this piece of steel here with a piece of 
one inch by two inch uh, box, rectangular box steel. And I'm gonna weld that, cut these uh, spindles right off this old piece of steel because it's just bolted in with three bolts to the tractor. And by the looks of it, it's, it's not done very well. I mean, you can see all these old pieces of metal welded on to everything. And it's just, it's just very ugly. Um, it works, but it's ugly. And I want it to look a lot better. So we're gonna chop these spindles off, weld in a new piece of steel on the front end. I'm probably gonna fully weld this frame together. I'm gonna take it right down to bare metal and just weld these points in here. Just, just the frame, not everything else, like the seat and everything else will still unbolt. I'm gonna redo these, because these aren't 100% stable, but I do like them, they are pretty cool. They'll get some sort of support in the bottom so your foot doesn't fall under and get sucked underneath the tractor while you're driving it around 40 miles an hour. In here, the tie rod setup. I'm probably gonna get new tie rods, but everything else is pretty good. These spindles seem fine to me, um, but these tie rods are welded in the middle together, which is probably perfectly fine. That side's done too, closer to that other end. But if you're traveling down the road at 40 miles an hour on something and one of these welds just happens to give away, especially considering I didn't weld it, so I don't know if it's been welded really strong, you know, that's your steering. So those are probably going to get replaced with new tie rod ends and tie rods. Something else that's really little and stupid is this hood support's not hooked up, which is not a big deal, but it's hooked up with one of those inflators for a soccer ball. It's pretty awesome. So I have to admit, I really kind of like the handlebars. Um, they're a little long. I'm probably going to shorten them by roughly the length of these grips you see on here now, just so when you turn, it doesn't hit you in the guts. Um, that kind of sucks. Uh, this is going to get replaced with a twist throttle on this side. I've got one of those already, ready to go on. Um, and this I'll probably transfer over to the other side and use that as actually for brakes. This gas tank isn't hooked up either. The only thing holding it on is the gas cap. So yeah, that's gotta get fixed. So yeah, for the most part, just the frame is good. Um, <laughs> the body's pretty good, the steering's good for the most part. Um, it's gonna need to get pretty much rebuilt like I was thinking originally, but that's fine. Uh, this is intended to be a project, so I just wanna cherry this thing out so it's as sweet as humanly possible. When I roll this thing out of the shed, people are just like, oh my God. Uh, so it's going to get completely repainted. I'm thinking the frame's going to be probably gloss black and maybe keep the body like a dark midnight blue or maybe a custom paint job or maybe one of those color changing paint jobs. I don't know. It'll be pretty simple since it's a small surface. Long term plans for the engine now are probably to replace it. Um, I know a user named TR Custom Engineering suggested I get a Harbor Freight engine and those things are like 80 bucks for a 6.5 horsepower Honda clone which is actually pretty cool. Um, I looked them up the other night and it does sound like a great idea. Uh, only thing is a lot of the reviews on them tend to say that they knock a little bit and they might not be the best engines because they might be factory seconds. But if any of you guys have uh, you know, experience with those Harbor Freight motors, uh, leave a comment below and let me know how those work out. Um, only problem is I'm not sure you can still get them because if you go on the website and click it, you, it takes you to a dead link. So I don't know what's going on with that. So I'll probably replace the motor. The rear axle is getting completely replaced, whole frame is going to get stripped, welded, repainted, and then everything's going to get redone. Uh, another user named V8 Mike suggested a jack shaft set up in the back, which might be a good idea. And the reason I really want to consider that is because you can see where this chain has just been eaten away at this metal. And I really want to ultimately slide this engine up forward more, as close as I can get it underneath the front end of the steering. Um, for, for a couple of reasons, to balance the weight out more, to get it away from my crotch, and really to make it rip donuts a lot easier because that's kind of what's important, you know. Uh, but I'll slide that forward and I don't want a chain that's, you know, five feet long going to the rear axle because there's a lot of movement there. I could put tensioner and idler sprockets in there to kind of keep it from bouncing all around, but it's still going to be a long chain, so maybe a jack shaft setup is something I should consider. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. As always, leave your suggestions because I'm reading them uh, and I am considering all of them. So I'm definitely open to ideas and thanks for watching my video and I'm gonna start ripping this thing apart.